So if you see my other videos, I finished uh, grounding here. So the next thing I'll show a link here. Uh, it's gonna do is I'm gonna refinish my tub. Most of it's pretty good, but the bottom is it's just propped up. You know how many decades it's been here. I'm gonna be uh, doing that. And I'm gonna be using this product. My first time trying it out. Not sponsoring anything, but I read all the reviews. It seems like it's pretty good. This is Echopel 2K, which is an epoxy-based finish. It's not. I think it's somewhere in between. Like the, I, mean, I guess they say that professionals can use it, but it's not that spray on an animal. They do, but you pay a couple thousand dollars for it. And it's not as cheap as the spray paint pong, but it's but like it's a two part. So you have that 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 mix, uh, mixed with a second part here, just like in the epoxy. Uh, and you then pour it on mostly. Uh, it comes with a roller, it's not for rolling. It is a little bit, but it's more just to kind of move the, the product around. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna try this out. Hopefully it works. All the videos I've seen seem like it's pretty easy or at least straightforward. You know, nothing's easy the first time. Um, so, yeah, and you kind of pour it, it's enough to do a whole tub and then the front eight drain and everything. So that's why I've waited uh, to the end, just because it, it made a big mess. So the prep is the biggest part. Uh, you want to get everything clean on it. I had a lot of uh, some of the epoxy that dropped on there, some of that thin set, everything. So, uh, so you want to get that down and get everything clean. And then there's a, a toilet, bowl, toilet bowl cleaner that they want you to use, or that they recommend. Uh, gonna, you just, to, to really get rid of any silk scum, everything, you just want it perfectly clean before you pour. So, let's get to it. And I've added uh, links in the description to the different products I've used it, that I'm using, just if you want to try it out. Uh, some of the tools I'm using, so check those out and let me know if you've actually used this product and then kind of compare notes. As I mentioned, prep work is the most important. So I used this kind of Brillo pad and kind of scraped to make sure there was no nothing lodged on here. Uh, just you can see it's actually worn down at the bottom here, but I want to make sure before I did any more of the cleaning, they get rid of all the grout. I did that already and just make sure again it's clean. So I had a little bit of rust here. So I cleaned that off with CLR. Make sure you use, cover your eyes, cover your hands. This stuff was pretty nasty. You may not need to do this, but I just want to make sure there, were, there wasn't anything that would be you know, staining the nice finish. Actually take this, this the part off the metal, but I just want to clean it while I was doing all the, the cleaning here. So here I'm, I'm using a sanding and just kind of you know, scuffing it up a little bit just because it's uh, enamel. I'm not sure how much I was able to do it, but I just want to make sure it was clean. Uh, they, they, uh, in the videos, I never saw them really doing this uh, more if you have any you know, big chunks like like this. So I had little uh, scratches just because this tub's so old, uh, but nothing really bad that really needed to be sanded down. I figured I was I was finishing it and the coating's pretty thick that I would be able to uh, to, to coat that but you can see it's kind of worn down at the bottom really that was when I wanted to get get rid of those stripe lines and here's that power gel that I mentioned this is what they recommend uh, I guess one of one of the more str stronger acidic cleaners so I use this to clean the tub so make sure you cover your hands cover your eyes uh, maybe a long sleeve would probably help I have these thick, thick gloves uh, as well uh, but I just you know you're, you're getting rid of all the soap scum any uh, anything that that's really dirty in there I use the kind of rough it's not really rough but you know that the, the scrubbing side of it just to make sure I got everything off here because you really want a, a perfect uh, surface for the epoxy to coat onto and to hold on to so you can see there's a, there's a lot of prep work and there's really it's not really a lot but it, that it's really important covering up any of the holes so here's the drain you see I take the metal off already I stuffed up the uh, drain just in case anything leaked into there and, and then before I taped it off, just so because you have to take the tape off towards the end. And I'm glad I used duct tape because it's, it's, I think it was a lot stronger than blue tape. Uh, but you'll see later on, it was, it was running a lot more than I expected it to. So I kind of just did the, cut this and then used that, uh, the, the, the drain to, as a, to score it, just to you know, get it. So you, you want it to have some covering at the area and here covering up the overflow as well and you can see I have the, the drain covered it's actually yeah, I did the tile and everything so it's it's it won't be leaking but you make sure that you don't want any leaking on there and then cover all around the the tile as well with with the tape so I ended up using one of the things they recommended was that cup to put there it didn't work for me it was but I'll show you later on uh, and then I use duct tape on the bottom of the floor 
just that would a little bit better. So here's all the materials. Uh, make sure you have everything ready just to, to go because uh, it takes a, you know, there's there's a lot to do and it starts going pretty quickly. So I mentioned I had this cup that I saw in the video. I had to tell that they it made a little dam, ended up being too light for me. Uh, but they give you the roller, as I mentioned, that kind of pushes the material around. That's the two parts. The the main part is in the tub, and then the uh, the part B is in that bottle, and then a stirrer. So one thing is very important they they can't stress enough is do not use an electric mixer because you'll get air bubbles in there. Uh, you may heat it up and it starts activating quicker than you expected. So you're supposed to mix it up for 10 minutes. It's it's pretty exhausting and it's not a very clean job either. So there I was just you know getting it off the sides and make sure I had it consistent before I mixed the two pieces together or to two parts. Sorry, this is just, I'm pouring the the B part in there. Make sure I got everything in there. So that's important. And then I'm just going to use a stirrer, and so you're supposed to stir it up for 10 minutes, and it's a long time. But again, you you don't want to add air bubbles, add any, you know, get it warmed up, anything that's going to cause a problem while you're trying to mix this. So obviously this is sped up because I'm sure you don't want to watch me for 10 minutes stirring epoxy. You can see I keep changing positions here. Uh, so you stir it up and just kind of kind of show you here's the consistency of it. You can see it thins out a little bit. It's still very thick, and as it pours on, it gets it's a lot thicker. So I'm checking, checking my watch here. So again, stir it up for about 10 minutes, and then you're gonna wait uh, about five. This is kind of normal with most epoxies. Uh, and then you're gonna stir it up again. Just the last bit is just to make sure it's it's consistent. So I'm doing my hand here, five minutes. So I've waited five minutes, it's stirred, and then another two or three minutes just to mix it around, make sure it's consistent. Again, I'm checking my watch, keeping my, I would keep a couple pair of gloves handy, uh, these nitrile gloves. Uh, it, I saw that I watched the videos and they do it pretty cleanly. It's maybe obviously I'm not a pro. This is my first time doing it, so I wasn't able to keep it very clean. I had to change them a couple times. I kept getting it everywhere. Uh, so this is again what I saw in the video. They they showed you dip it in there and it gives you like a you know a bit of sticky and you put it over and it acts as a dam. But as I poured it, all the you'll you'll see the epoxy just floated. That thing went right underneath it. I think it's it's really heavy, but it was worth a try. So. You'll see I keep trying, I'm getting ready to pour here and I'm trying to make up my mind. Where should I start? Should I start here? Uh, so you really just start, this is what you, if you watch their video, you'll see you, you just start pouring along the back wall or the back and the two side walls. And you'll see what you're doing is just pouring it down. So you can see I already made a, having trouble <laughs> getting it to pour uh, exactly. And then, you know, you get the, the tub uh, spouts in the way there. Uh, but you see why you have to cover up the overflow and the drain because that stuff just goes straight down. But you can see how, how much better it looks already, obviously, than that old uh, worn down color that I had on there. It's probably you know, a couple decades old tub. But you see you kind of pour it down. So the problem I had was getting you know, getting it to pour uh, the right amount or the you know total I think just because it's it's no problem with the material itself it's just not doing it and you know understanding how much cons how cons the, the thickness of it how far you should pour it just getting a consistent pour and you can see it was kind of in some places it was sticking under the tiles other places it wasn't uh, so I, I think I should have done a little bit better job of that it ended up being solid and so here's where you, you start pushing you know that extra material so I should have pushed that under the tiles a little bit better or just decide you know don't the, the part that's under tile I kind of pull it out a little bit so I would have consistent in the end you know I was able to silicone everywhere and it, it was it wasn't a problem but I think it just maybe for long term it might look a little bit better but you can see you're just kind of pushing it because you don't want a real thick you know like quarter inch thick on the top or anything so you just want to kind of push it uh, along and have it start running down the sides because that's what you want to do and there's a couple places uh, where you can see it's not it didn't run down consistently so that's one other thing they make it they recommend is usual a scooper and just kind of pour it along the top and get a consistent pour all the way down the edge I think I poured it a little bit too much because I had you know one place was a little bit thicker and I could see I didn't get it perfectly smooth but it was pretty good and also my set my kit didn't come with this little scooper so I had to make mine it wasn't too bad just you know I got I found some little box I had and then used duct tape to kind of make it you can see here's the cups already floating away this is the first time I realized it's probably not going to work but I left it there just you know tried as best I could and you don't have to worry about you see the back wall I didn't do very good or the wall near where the the, the tub spout is there I didn't pour enough and so it's kind of it doesn't give a, a good coating like the other ones did but you can use that sponge or sorry that, that roller and just kind of 
uh, push it up as best you can. And when you get a good coating, like I said, I didn't have a perfect one, but at this point you you're supposed to be scooping all this at material at the bottom because it's pretty thick and you, you got a lot down there and it would just, you would just end up with a really, really thick coating at the bottom. And it's going to continue to run. So you just keep scooping this up from the bottom. You can see I moved that cup already because it wasn't damming very well. Uh, but you just kind of scoop it all up here and then you use that extra material that you have right there. So you can see I'm kind of pushing it up on that, on that front wall there just to kind of get a, get a good coating. And then you're going to use this, whatever's in the bucket. I think they say about a third of the bucket uh, should be filled back with that extra material. That's all I rolled down. If you can see on the left, the glow, you should be able to see how thick it was right there. Uh, so I'm going to fill that up and I'm going to use that to pour along this close wall or the outside wall, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you can't, you won't be able to see it. Uh, but what you want to do is just pour it along the top because you want it to run mostly down into the tub, but you also want it to run along the front apron. Uh, which is another problem I had, or I had a struggle with getting it enough. Again, it's just understanding the material, just doing it the first time. I, w I was more concerned about getting the inside of the tub because I wanted that to be you know, a good, consistent coating because I figured that was more important. The outside was more visual because there won't be any water on the outside. Uh, but this is what I did. So you see, I'll, you, you'll see I end up having to do it a couple times, but I'm kind of scooping, pouring it, making sure it's pouring down the side. And if you look down, if you just kind of watch the middle, you can see where I've kind of streaked it, where I've scooped it out. Uh, where you can see it's not a consistent white, uh, but you'll notice as time goes on uh, that r the run runs all the way down across all of that and gives you a nice, a pretty smooth area. So I'm kind of you know, moving around. I think I started doing a little bit too much. Again, that's just from my first time, just worried that it's not going to be well or done correctly. So I was kind of touching up stuff. Or you can see here, I'm kind of trying to paint it instead of, you know, scooping up a little bit more and putting it on here so I ended up with not the best text I ended up actually with like a textured because it wasn't completely smooth so it's not what it's supposed to be but actually ended up not looking too bad because you know sometimes you have these tubs with that kind of textured uh, look to them so it I so I, I mean I think it's covered by the curtain the whole time so really in the end it wasn't that big of a deal but you'll see the front uh, if you I think this would be really difficult if I had, so I'm, I'm redoing this. If you can kind of see, I'll, I'll give you a playlist showing uh, that I'm redoing this whole bathroom. So my, I don't have any tiles on the floor, so I wasn't as worried about making a mess, uh, but I put the duct tape down there. As you can see, I'm, I'm scooping a little bit more here. I'm going to start using it, pouring it on the, the front wall again. Uh, but I, I'd be really worried of actually... You know, if I had tile that that I, that are already down on the floor there, because this again, this thing made pretty big of a mess. When if you watch the uh, the pros doing it in their videos, uh, they have no problems. They're pouring it real quickly, and it's not hard. But you know, the first time doing it, I'm sure if I did it two or three more times, I'd get a lot better at it. So again, it's not the material that's the problem. The material's uh, you know really really good, and so far I've had had any issues with it. I think it came out pretty thick. A couple things have been dropped on it. I like it. It's not. It looks glossy, and that was one of the things I was actually worried about. Is is it gloss? Is it going to be too glossy and slippery? But it has somewhat of a texture to it. So you can see I'm, I'm touching up the bottom a little bit more. So you're supposed to scoop out as you know, as you're you're complete the pour, kind of scoop out the middle because it's going to continue to run all the way down. You see, I dropped something on there. Uh, that, that's one of the good things is it takes a while, you know, an hour or so for it to cure. So you're going to end up, you, so you might have some hair every once in a while or some other drops that you can kind of get off and kind of you know, touch it up a little bit. So here I've got more uh, where I was scooping out the middle and I'm trying to pour it down. And at this point, I think it may be been about 40 minutes or so. So it's getting a little bit, it's, it's still running, it still runs well. Uh, but I think I should have done this, you know, more at the beginning and poured it. So you can see there, there's plenty left over. And even when I finished it, I still had you know, like a half inch or so in the bottom. So I think there's plenty. I was really worried about just running out of material, you know, and ended up with not a with that without a consistent. So I, I was trying to roll it here. I think I was just touching it too much, and I should have just left it alone at some point. So after you're done with the pours and everything, the next part is to get the heat gun. And just kind of go over if you've ever done any epoxy tables or anything, what you're doing is trying to get any of these micro bubbles out so you don't have these bubbles that are stuck in there and then pop and then leave, you know, little holes everywhere. And you're not trying to heat it up at all. You're just trying to get rid of bubbles. I, I looked, I didn't really see any bubbles, but I went over it really quick or pretty quickly so that I'm not, again, you don't want to heat it up and damage the epoxy, uh, the chemical curing. 
Uh, so the next thing I was doing was going here with, with a with a bright light. My phone, I could have done a little bit brighter, but I was seeing little things. I had little bugs, little hairs. And on here, I tried to touch it up again. Again, I was just touching it too much. I think I just should have just left it, um, especially on the front here. But again, like I said, I'm really happy the way it came out. There's a couple places that I think I could fix up, and I may try to do that in the future. Uh, but here's kind of showing you, here's, you can see it's still running down a little bit. At the top is running down a little bit more, uh, but this time it's drying up a little bit. It didn't end up looking like this, uh, but there's a, a couple places I think I can fix, maybe sand them down with a real high quality and then buff it. But at this point, I'm just, you know, I'm happy with it. I think I'm just going to leave it uh, unless I see, you know, see, I want to come up. So at some, at, at a point after, I think it is like 30 minutes or so after it, it it's, um, beginning to set up is when you want to take the tape off here and you don't want it to you don't want to wait till the, the epoxy has completely hardened because then it'll be stuck in the tape and you had to be having to cut it out and crack and it just it wouldn't work so do this as best you can I think there's a couple of times I, I let my shirt touch not just on the tape here but when I was trying to you know, get little bugs and things out of there uh, so it's really hard to do to this part and you can see kind of where it's, it's it's sticking under the tile a little bit so it ended up hardening that way so it's a nice so solid surface uh, but i think it's okay um, so here is the one of the last steps you do after it's it's drying up or you know you think it's start starting stopping running so much is you want to get as much as you can out of the uh, where the tape is and put it in the cup before you take the tape off so I'm using just using a paper towel I scooped a little bit but then I found it was kind of drying up this way it was better and I did this part too early again I, I think I had too much in the tub so it continued to run so when as I took this out I uh, took out the top first this this one that the top was okay uh, the bottom just continued to run into it and I was having to check it every five or ten minutes one time I missed it and it ran down into uh, but luckily I have the, the paper towels in there, so it stopped it. But there's one point where it ran into the threads a little bit and it ended up not being a problem. Uh, but uh, again, I was just, I, I took it off too early. You're supposed to continue to watch it for several hours. It really depends on your temperature and everything. Uh, but I, mean, I, I used this, I had the 75 degrees in here, so it was all correct. Uh, but it was just, again, it's, it's not the product. It's just the action, the, the, um, executing is 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 difficult especially the first time it's again it, it came out really nice i just on the second time it's like anything once you you know on next time you do it i could do a lot better so you can hear i, I was kind of touching it up a little bit so here's how you can see like i said it's not perfectly smooth uh, on the front this is where it's it pretty much dried like this but it actually doesn't look too bad it looks worse on here than in person it just in person it just looks like again like a textured tub and to me it wasn't really that big of a deal it didn't really bother me now it's hard to see it completely but it came out really nice like i said i'm happy but it makes a big mess as i mentioned uh, so put i would put plastic down if you have tiles that you're trying to keep if you have any anything so you know everything was a mess i got you know piece bits everywhere but again as i mentioned i'm really happy with it i like the the, the hardness of it and I, I think i would do it again